Hey everybody, in this video I am answering an email. And the email was basically, and I'm gonna generalize here, um, young man, and basically if you're under 30 of me, you're a young man because I'm almost 60. But a young man said, uh, Dag, I, have, I feel like I've mastered my uh, trainer. Uh, I spent a lot of time on a flight sim. I finally got me a low wing ARF Warbird and I'm loving flying that, but I really wanna start going to fly-ins. And what advice could I give this person to feel comfortable going to a fly-in? So here's a couple of things, and I, I've touched on this video before a little bit, but I'm gonna try to dive deeper without making this a really long video, which is an oxymoron, because if you're one of my longtime followers, my videos go long. So essentially, um, a fly-in is where a whole bunch of people get together. Uh, it could be just for a couple of afternoons. It could be two entire days. It could be just a Saturday or a Sunday, or it could be a week long. Now, I tend to go to SEF every year for the last 11 years, and I go to a couple of other smaller ones, but SEF is the, like the second biggest fly-in in the country. It's tied sometimes with Neat Fair, and only Joe Nall beats us in the number of pilots. We average about 230, 240 pilots a year. On the big years, it was over 400. But SEF is a really cool fly-in, and I'm gonna dive into that a lot deeper in a minute. Before I get too far into this, if you don't know me and you're new to my channel, I'm obsessed with giant scale electric model airplanes. Um, I'm also building an ultralight and I'm a full scale pilot, but that full scale piloting is really expensive and owning a hangar and owning a plane, it's a lot easier to spend all of my um, discretionary money on model airplanes, <laughs> if discretionary is the right word. But I'm obsessed with conceptualizing an airplane, designing it in CAD, moving it into 3D, building the airplane, test flying the airplane, and then having fun flying the giant scale plane for years. Uh, the plane I'm flying right now, which is that yellow and blue plane, has 188 inch wingspan. Uh, also, another thing before I get into this, I wanna talk about my awesome sponsor, RTL Fasteners. If you go to rtlfasteners.com, you can find all the bolts and nuts you need for the hobby. Blind nuts, metric standard, uh, socket head, servo screws, they've got it all. If you buy more than $50 a product and you use code DA30, you'll get 30% off your order. So now I want to dive into this. And I want, I'm, I'm, I, if you followed my channel at all, I only give you my own personal experiences. I don't like to hypothesize. I don't like to just say, oh, I read it on Google. These are things that I've done myself. That's the reason I think my channel is somewhat popular is because if you kind of do what I tell you to do, normally it works for you, uh, but your mileage might vary. But first of all, you got to ask yourself, if you're going to be flying around people, um, you need to look at yourself as a pilot for a minute and really double check, do you understand how an airplane flies? Okay, I have met RC pilots that just yank and bank, and if they land anywhere within 100 yards of them, they're happy, and I think that's great, okay? But if you're going to go to a fly-in and fly around other people, and you're gonna take off and land on a runway that everybody's going their same direction, you need to ask yourself, you know, do you know how an airplane really flies? And I know that sounds really simplistic, but do you realize if you use ailerons uh, in a stall, you can cause a spin from it? Do you know how to use your rudder? Do you know that getting slow from base to final is where most people crash? Okay, you gotta ask yourself, do you really understand how an airplane works? Or did you just buy one in a box and learn to fly it? It would be really helpful if you really understood how to go around. So like, let's say you're landing at a fly-in and somebody else is on the field and you hear somebody yell, I'm on the field, you can go around. And you also need to make sure you don't get tunnel vision. Because I saw a person walk out in the runway one time yelling to everybody, I'm on the field and a guy still landed and went right over the guy's head. So you, you still, you just need to make sure you understand your airplane and how it flies. Do so you need to think about your stick time? How much are you flying? If you're flying once a month, you need to ask yourself, are you going to have, uh, a, 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 are you going to be able to put your airplane where you want to put it? And that kind of gets into disciplines and skills, the next two things I'm going to talk about. Discipline is, you're at the field and somebody yells, hey, Luke, do a loop. And you're like, okay, and you've never done a loop. That's not the time to do a loop. 
or if they say, do a loop in as close as you can to yourself. If you've never done that, a fly-in is not where you want to do that. It's not a, hey, y'all, watch this activity. Fly-ins should be when you absolutely fly the safest you can because you might have 200 people behind you. Then you need to think about the discipline. Like I'm, I'm talking about right here is, can you, can you not contribute into somebody doing something stupid? Now, if they have the combat where everybody's chasing the hound and the hare, great. The fly-in, you can go crazy. But trying to fly formation with somebody for the first time at a fly-in may not be the smartest thing to do. You never test fly an airplane during the fly-in. Now, if the fly-in ends at 5 o'clock at night and you get with one of the contest directors, say, hey, I want to test fly a plane this tonight. Can I do it? Me personally... You might want to be careful doing that because if you don't, if you're not 99% sure your plane's going to fly, that's not the place to learn it won't fly. Now, I have test flown uh, this yellow and blue plane the day before a fly end opened. Okay, so I showed up a day early, we got our tents all set up, I test flew the plane, and then we flew it. I've seen contest directors actually pause a show to test fly a plane because everybody wants to see it fly. So it depends on, if you've flown for 30 years and you're gonna test fly a plane that you pretty much know is gonna fly, that might not be a problem. But don't show up thinking, okay, I'm gonna test fly this plane here and not tell anybody and I'm just gonna take a chance. Then you need to think about your skills and skills and discipline to me always go hand in hand because if you don't have the skills, you gotta have the discipline to tell yourself not to try something. <clears throat> if you don't know how to use your rudder, <coughs> excuse me, and fly the heading down the runway, if you always have to take off straight in front of you, straight out across the pattern in front of everybody, that's not the place to do it at a fly-in. Okay, that's dangerous. Um, and then you need to think about your frame of mind. Why am I going to a fly-in? And almost all of us go to meet other pilots and have fun. I have met a couple of people that go just to show off their airplane. They don't know how to fly. They can't use rudder. I actually saw a weld... I mean, a world-renowned builder take off a twin one time and crash it because, A, he didn't know how to use rudder, and the plane fell apart in the air. It did. It fell apart in the air and crashed. And this was at a fly-in with like 300 people. So you, you need to really kind of think to yourself, why am I going to this? I go to them, believe it or not, just to hang out with all my pals I only see once a year. Once a year. You plus, plus at Seth, we have like over a thousand airplanes there. So it's just really cool to see all those airplanes. So now I want to talk about the plane you're going to take to the fly-in. And this is going to sound a little bit childish when I say this. But this is my Flex Cessna 170. I love this airplane. I could fly this airplane off the street in front of my house. And actually, my neighbors would love it because I used to fly some of my really small stuff. But this plane will land at like 8 mile an hour. This plane will slow fly better than any plane I have because of all the, um, oh, the uh, vortex generators on the wing. This airplane will fly so slow, it's insane. And I would take this to any fly-in in the world, okay? But I got my Avante here. I turned this into a lead sled because I wanted to fiberglass paint it and see how it flies. It still flies fantastic. But there's only probably a few fly-ins I could take it to that have grass that I could get this off the ground because the grass creates so much drag. Okay, so you need to think about what planes you're taking to the fly-in. Um, if you've got some hand launch stuff, you're going to have a blast. If you've got some EDFs with really little bitty wheels, you need to make sure that either they have pavement or they've got that almost like driving range grass uh, and at Ceph, the grass is about a quarter inch high, so this plane takes off fine. But I have seen some other EDFs that can't get off the grass, even though the grass is like a quarter inch tall. They need pavement. So you need to think about that briefly. Then you got to think about, this is my MSL-1 that I took to many fly-ins. You need to think about, do I have enough room to fly my airplane at a fly-in? If you're taking something giant scale like I do, and I get invited to fly-ins all the time, there are some that are just so small 
that most giant scale airplanes probably shouldn't be flown there. Now this airplane, I can fly this basically within a soccer field, no problem. I could probably fly it within a softball diamond because this thing will cruise around at 25 mile an hour, just like a big floaty plane. Okay, uh, and it slows down really quick because of the drag. But you really need to think about, do you have the skills to fly something like this? Because I was invited to a fly-in once and I took this plane there and I didn't fly it the entire first day. And everybody's like, why didn't you fly your plane? And I kind of fibbed because I said, well, you know, I just was getting it all ready and working on it. I did not want to fly. There was like 40 planes in the air. All, well, I'm, I'm exaggerating. There were probably six or eight planes in the air all the time. This place did not have a lot of room. It had a neighborhood on the other end uh, of the field behind, behind the, the uh, pattern. And I wanted to wait until it was evening when hardly anybody was flying and fly it the first time. So around eight o'clock, about an hour before the sun went down during the summer, I got it out, had two spotters, and I took it off and I flew around and it was a really tight place for this airplane. And believe it or not, one of the spotters I had wasn't with me here. They were on the other side by the neighborhood to see if I was flying over the neighborhood. And he said, I was getting really close to flying over the neighborhood, but I never got over any houses. And I'm thinking, holy cow, I thought I was 100 yards inside of that neighborhood. So um, the next day I did fly it. I flew it a couple of times the next day, but I did not enjoy flying this airplane at that fly-in because it was such a small place. Um, now keep in mind, there were some turbines and EDFs there, and I know they were over that neighborhood without a doubt, but I can only kind of police myself. I don't get in arguments at fly-ins. I might joke or, or I, I might suggest to the contest director, hey, do you know those people are going over those houses? And if he looks at me and laughs and go, yeah, man, isn't that cool? I'm like, well, there's no helping this. But they go, do you really think so? And I'm like, yeah, you might want to send somebody over there just to make sure we're not flying over the houses. Well, then he'll get on the radio and say, hey, folks, we're flying over the houses. We got to get it back this way. So, and that's another thing about going to these big fly-ins. Be careful that you don't become that know-it-all jackass or that person who's bossing everybody around or that person who just doesn't give a shit about any, I'm, I'm sorry, give a crap about anybody. You all just got to get along, and 99% of the people are just like you. They want to have fun and fly, okay? This is my MSL-2 that I've taken to a couple of fly-ins. It's, it's only three years old. I take it to Ceph every year. I've taken it up to the AMA headquarters to a couple of fly-ins, and I was invited to go to another fly-in, and I went out a week before the fly-in to fly this, and this plane was too big for that fly-in. And I, I told my buddy, I said, dude, you know, even though I can put this airplane on a paper plate when I land it, if there's going to be a lot of people around and a lot of distractions, I don't want to fly this at this little field. Not to mention, on the other end of, I mean, behind where they flew was basically a lake. And I didn't want to get my plane out over all of that. I just, I said, dude, I, I w if you want me to bring it in static, show it, fine, but I don't want to fly it. And that's hard for somebody like me because I love people to see my plane fly. I don't want to say I got an ego. I like to say I have an elevated a level of pride, but it just wasn't going to fit. But here's something to think about when you're at a fly-in. <clears throat> and these pictures are from Ceph, and I had mounted cameras all over my MSL-2, this yellow airplane. As you can see in this picture, there's one other airplane in the air, and, and there's probably one or two other smaller ones. But one of the things I love about Ceph is you can kind of sit there because it lasts an entire week. You can sit there with your batteries ready and your radio ready and the plane ready, and you will see lulls in flying where people are either getting sandwiches or they're going over to the little portable restaurant to get food, and you can fly without the sky being full of planes. But I've seen people go to fly-ins that they want to be in that muck. They want to go up and scream around while all the other airplanes are up there. And I love to fly when very few planes are in the air. Now, I have flown at a fly-in where we had 12 planes in the air, and I had my spotter. And keep in mind, if you're a spotter, you're not watching the airplane that you're spotting for. You're never looking at it. You're kind of telling your pilot you're spotting for where all the airplanes are in the air. And most of my spotters are really good, like, okay, we got three planes down to our left. They're all pretty low. You're way above them. 
and then they'll say, oh, okay, we got two planes landing left or right. They're always talking to me. Oh, they'll say, okay, there's a plane crash, there's a pilot on the field. And since I fly electric, that's very important to hear because I fly religiously about a six minute flight. I have telemetry in my ear that tells me my battery level. So if I'm at five minutes of flight and I know a plane crashed and there's people in golf carts going out to it, I will f slow fly my airplane to keep my battery pack voltage up. I always like to have enough power to do one or two go arounds. Okay, I can get about an 11 minute flight out of this 6,000 watt behemoth. But I like to fly six minute flights. Okay, and that's just me personally flying something this big. And if I hear that there's been a crash and at a big fly-in, there's going to be everybody with golf carts going out there. I don't want to be that person that starts getting low voltage and telling people I have to land. It's an emergency. Now, luckily at CEF, there is a parallel runway, a uh, perpendicular runway to us, that if I needed to walk down to that, I could land. But it's about a 100-yard walk, and my spotter is going to have to lead me all the way down there. So I just want you to think about what's going on in the air, okay? Uh, this is an aerial view, uh, and all these aerial views were taken by my friend Berger and Dean with their drone at Ceph this year, uh, really kick-ass guys. But when you start to understand that on the flight line there are airplanes, but behind the flight line there are also airplanes being brought out, sometimes on wagons or being rolled out. If you bring a scooter to a fly-in, and a lot of us do, or we have golf carts, be careful going around turns really quick. There might be an airplane sitting next to an RV and you're going to buy somebody a new airplane. Um, it makes, it terrifies me sometimes when I see people on mini bikes or mopeds or the electric, you know, razors flying around on them in the grass because if they get out of control and they run over somebody's airplane, it's going to be a bad day, especially some of the golf carts, the way people drive golf carts. So keep that in mind. I love this aerial view that we all saw at the beginning. Um, I think it was at the beginning of this. Um, there is so many open places to fly at fly-ins that if, if you know you have the skills and you know you have the discipline, there's no reason you can't have an absolute blast going to a fly-in. And I shared three or four emails with this person that sent me the email. And, you know, I asked him, you know, do you think you could land within a 10-foot mark of a paper plate? And he said, with my, with my trainer, yes. With my warbird, no way. So I said, well, depending on how much runway you got to fly in, you might fly your trainer there just to be a part of it, and you might not fly your warbird. And he says, yeah, I don't know if I'll fly my warbird. And I said, email's going back and forth here. I said, look, if you're not sure you're going to fly it, don't get the bravery there. Get the bravery because you know you have the skills. Because peer pressure, I have seen some really dangerous things done at fly-ins from peer pressure. Somebody shows up with an airplane, they're like, oh, come on, you can get that in the air. And they're like, okay, and they work two days and they get it finished. And then they're test flying it at the fly-in. I've seen that happen a lot. So, I mean, knock on wood, I don't remember anybody being seriously injured at any of the fly-ins I've gone to. I know at other ones it's happened. But you have a huge responsibility flying. If it's a 61-pound airplane like my big yellow one, or if it's a, um, if it is just an ARF, an ARF to the side of the head with that electric motor at 50 mile an hour can probably kill you just as fast as my big yellow and blue plane. But keep in mind, my big yellow and blue plane, most people can see it coming. Um, a little bitty ARF or a little ducted fan going 100 mile an hour people might not see it coming. And, you know, you just, you just kind of need to think about, I mean, I don't want to be doom and gloom here, but you are responsible for the safety of the people around your airplane. Okay? So, um, I was at a fly-in. I was about three people down. I had just landed. Uh, and what I mean by three people down was we... At some flights, you have dedicated pilot stations. At other ones, you, you and your spotter will pick a spot and stand on a line. So three people down from us, I hear a guy yells, oh my God, I don't have it. And I've got my airplane, I'm unhooking my batteries because it's the first thing I do when I land is I start shutting down my batteries. And I looked over at him, I looked up and way up high is this ducted fan. 
and it's doing like this weird oval like this. It's diving and then it's coming back up and now it's doing this and he's shaking the radio. He turns the radio on and off, which might be a good or a bad idea because it's still going to have to you know remake contact with your 2.4 and nothing worked. And the plane, believe it or not, kind of skipped the ground which was really scary, and luckily it was away from the uh, away from the crowd because it came in right over the pits, skipped the ground, hit a bunch of tall grass, and then crashed. It tore, I think, the right wing off it. But when we got out there and he took it apart, inside it looked like a rat's nest of wires and connectors. And any time I put a connector on, like when I put my wing on and I connect that, I either use one of those plastic connectors to hold the two leads together. Or I use some electric tape. There were none of these in that airplane. So for all he knows, his battery connector could have come unplugged um, from this his switch that you turn on and off his receiver with. So make sure that you're bringing an airworthy airframe to the fly-in. Okay? Um, but that's pretty much it in this video, everybody. I want everybody to go to fly-in. I mean, even if you don't fly, go and meet the pilots. If you got a trainer, go there, and some fly-ins start at like 9 in the morning and then end at 5 o'clock, and some of them are going for like an entire week, which means technically, and the reason you need to know that is it's when the AMA uh, looks at it as like a sanctioned fly-in or a sanctioned event, and I don't know all the, the terms for that, but make sure it's not during the event you do a test flight, okay? But if you bring your trainer there, and you've already flown your trainer, and you feel good with your trainer, find another pilot and a spotter and say, hey, look, when it's really slow in the evening, can I fly this here? And if I'm at that fly-in and you can't find anybody to fly with, come find me. Say, hey, Dag, I saw your video. I want you to come help me fly my trainer here. And I'm going to ask you some questions, you know. Can you fly the pattern? Can you fly figure eights? And if you're, oh, yeah, no, I do great with this trainer. I just want someone to watch me. And I'm like, cool, I'll watch you. So I hope you enjoy these videos, everybody. I try to keep them human. I try not to put people down. I try not to talk down. I try not to complain. I try to be nothing but positive in these videos because model aviation is one of the coolest things we can ever be a part of. I mean, the physics, the science, just the mastering of, a, of flying an aircraft is some of the, the, the greatest feelings you can have flying model aircraft. And actually, I'm working on another video where an email says, can I explain why I love it the way I do. Now, I, I did a video called The Path of how I got to where I am, but somebody wants me to do a video on why do I think up these airframes? Why do I create what I create? Why do I love to 3D print so much stuff that goes into my airplane? So um, that will be a future video, everybody. So I'm going to shut this video down now. I hope this helps you all, especially if you're a lower time pilot and you're newer or younger to it and you want to go to a fly-in, um, I would beg you to do it. Even if you don't fly, just go meet the people. And um, uh, you know, just to meet everybody, just, just to, to get to know how they work. You know, I mean, my first two fly-ins I went to, I never flew out. I never even took a plane to them. This was like 30 years ago, 40 years ago. But I didn't even take airplanes to it. I left my airplanes at home because at that time I didn't have the confidence that I should be part of that crowd. And that's not true. Even if you bring your airplane and don't fly it, you're part of the crowd. Rock on. I always end my videos with this statement. Take a kid flying. 6 to 12, 14, 15-year-old kids are a must for a hobby. If you hate FPV, if you hate drones, if you hate kids, if you hate um, airplanes, why are you a part of this? So um, I'm, really, I'm really starting to get irritated with all of the younger people that reach out to me. And I'm talking 15, 16-year-old kids that say, hey, thanks for doing these videos. But I went to this club and everybody basically treated me like crap because I had a drone. Come on, people. I've been in this long enough that everybody hated helicopters. Everybody hated gliders. Okay. There's just too much hate out there. So, so be nice to the kids or just walk away. Rock on, everybody. I'll see you next time. Be safe and take care. Bye.